These are some gender affirming and identity affirming behaviors that anyone can do, but it's something I would focus on also in my, when I'm building a class to make sure that I have these things incorporated. So respecting pronouns, we'll talk about some like activities and ways to incorporate that. Um, having access to gender affirming environments. So creating a classroom that's inclusive is a great example of that. And then, you know, offering resources for your students. So for all students, like students with disabilities, LGBTQ students, et cetera, and having those resources either in your syllabus or on your Canvas page, just so they have them right there. They're also on, you know, like the Lake Tahoe website and things like that. But I think it's really nice to have it in like a module or something, just so they have easy access to the links or other resources off campus. It's been really great though. They provided us four extra laptops in our lab mm -hmm. that the students can use. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if one of them just came to class one day and helped the students download that, I think it right. is available on campus for students. It's just hard to get to and hard to download. Okay. Yeah, and again, Microsoft, um, or that was just the message about the Chromebook. But yeah, I think at least in the past, the downloaded version of um, Microsoft Suite was available. This is put by Richard Riley, and basically we're currently preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist using technologies that haven't yet been invented in order to solve problems we don't even know are problems yet. If we think about that, if you ask pretty much anybody five years ago if COVID was going to happen, if education as we know it was going to be shut down to where a student of any age or any level could not walk into a classroom, nursing students that needed to learn how to give shots, take blood, they weren't even allowed to go into a lab to do that for a specific amount of time. Um, so this quote really fit I mean, this quote was done before COVID. So it really, it's really kind of ironic that it, it really came to fruition the way it did. If you need it, you don't want eye strain. We spend so much time in front of the computers. You don't want headaches. Um, you know, if you are getting headaches, have you tried blue light glasses? Is there anything you can do? Can you put a filter on your screen? Can you change it from light to dark? Can you change the lighting within your office in order to make sure that, that you're taking care of yourself um, so you can keep working and so that you can enjoy your time off as well? Um, again, working from home is wonderful, but you need to find a way to do it efficiently. Um, as students, I'm sure you've seen, when you're trying to do those online classes, there's lots of interruptions. Um, some organizations, that's totally appropriate and okay. And others, even though you're working from home, you are expected to be at your computer during those working hours. So when we think about why, why now, why it matters even more than ever before, um, the rate and saturation of media consumption, as we're talking about, um, when we think about our cell phones, our social networking, um, even things like playing video games, you're, you're connected, um, you know, with these kind of live, um, you know, role-playing games. Um, even our our television has you know the the reality TV um, where we're watching you know so you think you can dance or whatever it may be um, just the traditional forms the radio newspaper magazines um, we're exposed to more media more messaging um, in one day than you know, our, our ancestors were exposed to perhaps in their whole life 
their whole lifetimes. one point um, on my shirt, on, on my little bit emoji, which Kat and I both love to use, as you've seen through her course as well, is I had a student come reach out to me this quarter, and, and she's a recent, um, recently transitioning um, transgender student, and she said, I just want to tell you that how thankful I am that you have that right on your homepage. It made me feel very comfortable being in your class, so I think I want to just emphasize what Kata said about images, about how you portray your personality and who you are in an online classroom. I think it's really easy to do in a face-to-face -face classroom. We have to be a little bit more thoughtful and forward-thinking in an online setting. So um, when Sarah is talking about like we need to make the students comfortable in the language class, also I always tell them that do mistakes, it's okay because you will learn from your mistakes because there's a lot of students that I want to do it perfect. And I was like, okay, but if you do it perfect all the time, you will not improve. Uh, and then, and perfection is really hard to attain in a second language. <laughs> in life, actually. And in, yeah. So I always communicate that, that learn from the mistakes, it's important. The individuals who participate in the Q&A can really add to the content and create some opportunities for new conversations or synergy, synergy to develop during the, the workshop, particularly in the Q&A session. So here is the setup here. So we're in Sarah's and Kata's office, and I knew I wanted to have three microphones. So each of them have a high quality XLR mic. You can see one, two, and then three. This is my own little setup. I'm running my laptop here. It's not a huge setup, so I'm using my laptop along with my Zoom um, R20 recorder. Maybe like you would devise your own headers and you're gonna see what these look like in a second. Um, Okay, so in other words, we could just, I sometimes do this in a, in a class setting. So we could have this column here with the header B, a form of technology. So I might pick the iPhone. I thought, because I'm talking about pros and cons, these could be pros and cons of the use of the iPhone. And then maybe a question I have specific to the iPhone that if I were a student studying this in a classroom setting for like a research paper, I could maybe use that question to frame an argument or a conversation. I, I hope that as students, you get to engage with technology in critical senses in your classes. And I hope as faculty that you'll be able to really focus critically on technology and its applications uh, with, with your students as you're teaching them. <music>